I'd like to take a moment to let you all know about a new nonprofit organization started by my brother Craig. It's called Treats and Truth. They fill oversized brown lunch bags with snack items, chips, crackers, popcorn, cookies, etc. Also, a bottle of water, toothbrush, toothpaste, sanitary wipes, and most importantly, a small gospel tract book of John. No cigar? Uh, I'll have to talk to him about that. The bags are then hand-delivered to the homeless and people in need in and around the Los Angeles area. Let's help get this ministry off the ground. They're a 501c3 tax-exempt organization, so any and all donations are tax-deductible and greatly appreciated. Visit their website at treatsandtruth.org. Check out the show notes for the link. Also, please follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. Welcome to episode 139 of the Burning Bush Podcast, where we share the message of the Bible while enjoying a good cigar. Hope you're doing well, and I'm glad you've joined me. Today, we're reading the New Testament book of Mark, chapter 12, with commentary from the notes in the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible. And I'm smoking the El Borracho by Dapper Cigars, the Connecticut Broadleaf Box Pressed Toro 6x54. So let's go to the Dapper Cigars website and see what they have to say. The El Baracho Connecticut Broadleaf stands on the shoulders of our original El Baracho San Andreas release. Using that original blend as a base, we've amped up the cigar's strength by adding slightly more Nicaraguan Ligero from Oliva Tobacco's prized La Jolla farm and swap the wrapper with a lush U.S. Connecticut Broadleaf. This new combination produces a robust smoking experience that'll satisfy even the most seasoned cigar smokers. And the strength is full. Flavor is full as well. Tasting notes are leather, minerals, heavy cream, and black pepper fill the palate. Rounded layers of pepper with hints of a maturely inherent sweetness are most apparent in the retrohale. And the wrapper is U.S. Connecticut Broadleaf. Binder is Nicaraguan from Jalapa, Cofradia, and Habano Rosado. And the fillers are all Nicaraguan from Esteli, La Jolla, Jalapa, Cofradia, Condega, and G.K. Relleno. And the Vitolas are Robusto, 5x50 box pressed, Edmundo, 5.5 by 52 box pressed, Toro, 6 by 54 box pressed, and the Bellicoso, 6 and a quarter by 52 box pressed as well. That is the El Borracho Connecticut Broadleaf by Dapper Cigars. So let's go ahead and get back into this week's reading of the book of Mark, chapter 12. I am reading from the English Standard Version, the ESV, and verse 1 reads, And he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard, and put a fence around it, and dug a pit for the wine press, and built a tower, and leased it to tenants, and went into another country. When the season came, he sent a servant to the tenants to get from them some of the fruit of the vineyard. And they took him and beat him and sent him away empty-handed. Again he sent to them another servant, and they struck him on the head and treated him shamefully. And he sent another, and him they killed. And so with many others, 
Some they beat and some they killed. He had still one other, a beloved son. Finally, he sent to them saying, they will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and the inheritance will be ours. And they took him and killed him and threw him out of the vineyard. What will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read the scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And they were seeking to arrest him, but feared the people, for they perceived that he had told the parable against them. So they left him and went away. And they sent some to him some of the Pharisees and some of the Herodians to trap him in his talk. And they came and said, Teacher, we know that you are true and do not care about anyone's opinion. For you are not swayed by appearances, but truly teach the way of God. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay them or should we not? And Spurgeon comments on verses 13 and 14. They sent some of the Pharisees and the Herodians to Jesus to trap him in his words. They said to him, Teacher, we know you are truthful and don't care what anyone thinks, nor do you show partiality, but teach the way of God truthfully. They meant to trap him in his words, if they could, so they baited their trap with flattery. Any time a person begins to flatter us, we should be on our guard. If someone tries to commence a conversation by uttering words of excessive admiration, depend on it that that person admires something we have more than he admires us. And therefore, we should be on the watch against him. And back to Mark, verse 15. But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why put me to the test? Bring me a denarius and let me look at it. And they brought one, and he said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said to him, Caesar's. Jesus said to them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. And Sadducees came to him, who say that there is no resurrection. And they asked him a question, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife, but leaves no child, the man must take the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. There were seven brothers. The first took a wife, and when he died, left no offspring. And the second took her, and he died, leaving no offspring. And the third likewise. And the seventh left no offspring. Last of all, the woman also died. In the resurrection, when they rise again, whose wife will she be? For the seven had her as wife. Jesus said to them, Is this not the reason you are wrong? Because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God spoke to him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are quite wrong. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, asked him, which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus answered, The most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, 
You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and there is no other besides him. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. And as Jesus taught in the temple, he said, How can the scribes say that the Christ is the son of David? David himself, in the Holy Spirit, declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord, so how is he his son? And the great throng heard him gladly. And Spurgeon comments on verse 37, David himself calls him Lord, how then can he be his son? They could not answer that riddle, but we can. We know Jesus is both David's son and David's Lord. And back to Mark verse 38. And in his teaching he said, Beware of the scribes, who like to walk around in long robes and like greetings in the marketplaces, and have the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at feasts, who devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. And Spurgeon comments on verses 38 through 40. Beware of the scribes. We often hear foolish people say, You must always preach in love and not say anything against anybody. Jesus did not denounce anybody. Then what about this denunciation of the scribes? Were Jesus here today, he would not be the soft-shelled creature some people want us to be. He had a backbone and a conscience and a heavy right hand, and he brought that hand down like a sledgehammer on hypocrisy and error. And if we would be like Christ, we must be bold and outspoken. They tell us this in order that we may easily glide through the world and that all may speak well of us. But so did their fathers to the false prophets. Are we to suppose that those of us who preach God's word are going to keep back any part of our testimony because it will bring us into ill repute with the ungodly? God forbid. We live for something higher and nobler than being fed on the breath of evil persons. If there is error in high places, if there is vice anywhere, it is the duty of the servant of Christ in his master's name to attack it with all his might. The truth of God must still be spoken, whoever may be offended by it. And back to Mark, verse 41. And he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums. And a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly, I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. And Spurgeon says about verse 43, This poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. Christ measures what we give by what we have left, by the proportion it bears to what we possess. And finishing up in Mark verse 44, For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. And that's the end of today's reading in the book of Mark. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible, as well as today's cigar. Also, Groundworks Ministries for daily Bible studies and devotionals, Treats and Truth Ministry, where you can get involved in helping to spread the gospel to and be a blessing to the homeless, and the Burning Bush Merchandise Store, where you can pick up some items to help spread the word about the show. And if you know anyone who needs to hear this, please let them know about the podcast 
and help share the message of the Bible, the hope we have in Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. If you'd like to contact me, you can email me at steve at the burningbushpodcast.com, which is linked in the show notes as well. So until next time, have a great day, have a great cigar, and God bless.